Hi there, I'm Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition. And in this video, I want to give you guys some ideas for building a great home gym that won't break the bank. So I'm gonna start by saying that I'm sorry because this is gonna be a bit of a longer video. But if it gives you guys some ideas to get into great shape and it saves you a little bit of dough, well, then it's all worth it. So you probably heard me say in a number of videos now that I live in Montreal, Canada. And that's a large city with over 1.6 million people. And because of my job, I have memberships at three separate gyms. And finding a great gym in a big city like Montreal is not a huge problem. But maybe you don't have the time to travel to a gym. Or maybe you feel uncomfortable training in a gym and you'd rather train at home, which is all good. Or maybe there's just not a good gym anywhere around where you live. You see, my wife is from Ontario, Canada, and she fell in love with this 40 plus acre property that dates back to the 1850s. And we often stay there on the weekends. And during the summer months, there's a ton of stuff to do outside. And so keeping in shape on the weekends is not really a problem. But this is Canada and we do have winter. And that really limits what I feel like doing outdoors in the winter because um, it's kind of cold. And because I don't feel like skipping Friday, Saturday, and Sunday workouts, I decided that I would use this old chicken coop to build myself a cheap gym that I can use on the weekends. And because there's no gym anywhere around here, and because we have the free space as we don't have any animals except for a cat, I decided that building a home gym would be a good idea. So in this video, I will walk you through step by step what me, a strength and conditioning specialist, put into his home gym using a very limited budget. As soon as I walk in the door, I flip on the light switch. Now this gym has electricity, but it doesn't have heat. Also right here, I have a Bluetooth speaker that recognizes and plays the music right off my phone so that I have my own music to work out to. And it sounds great. You gotta love technology. And I'm telling you that it's infinitely easier to train with your own music. <laughs> and you could easily pick up a Bluetooth type of speaker for somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 bucks. The next thing that I do is remove my boots and I change into some shoes. This way I don't get the place all dirty and wet from some melting snow. And now you may ask, why am I dressed so ugly? Well, I'm going to work out, so I really don't care what I look like. The most important thing is that I'm comfortable. And I also want to make sure that I contrast for these videos so that you'll be able to see me. And also it's freezing outside. And so I like to use multiple ugly layers rather than having one big bulky jacket. I also keep some hand wraps right next to the door because I'll be doing a lot of boxing in here. And I'll also use those hand wraps instead of gloves to lift some weights. Now, normally in town, I don't use gloves to lift weights, but in here I will because it's cold. And on the days when it's freezing cold, I'll even use some winter leather gloves instead of the hand wraps. Now, the very first thing we need to do is talk about the chicken coop itself. Now, at one time, this place had chickens, maybe a hundred years worth of chickens. And so the first thing that I had to do was empty it all out and clean it and vacuum it thoroughly or at least the best that I could. Now you may notice the ceiling and the wall are black, but it wasn't always like that. The place was originally all white, and the first thing that I needed to do was to control the dust and the bugs in the summer. So I used a staple gun and some screen that I had lying around to cover any openings. But that wasn't enough to stop the bugs and the dust from getting through these old walls. And another problem that I had was paint chips and dust kept falling from the ceiling when I would hit the heavy bag. And so I wanted to use a material that would really seal everything up. So I went to the hardware store and I picked up a roll of synthetic roofing paper for around 50 bucks. And I used a staple gun and covered up most of the walls in the ceiling. And that was perfect for sealing up the room and stopping all of that old debris from falling on me. And the reason why I mention this is if you're planning on using a dusty place, like an unfinished basement or a garage for your gym, then using some synthetic roofing material like this to stop the dust is definitely worth every cent. The next problem was the floor. The original floor was cement. And so I bought a couple bags of cement for three bucks each and I fixed up any holes and I made the place somewhat level. Next, I used three different types of flooring to cover the floor. And that really helped to control the level of dust. Now you're going to be surprised what you can find at garage sales or in classified ads. And so I implore you to really take a look there. And I say that because here the first section of flooring, which is made of these thick rubber puzzle pieces, well I bought that whole section off a classified ad for 50 bucks. 
and I use that section of flooring for some shadow boxing. I have a double-ended bag there. And I also use it for some bodyweight exercises like push-ups and stuff. The next section of flooring is also some puzzle pieces that I've purchased, but they're made of some sort of foam. And I also got that whole section for about 50 bucks. And I use this section for doing some stuff like some abdominal work or some stretching because the flooring is a little softer. The last section of flooring I actually bought new at the hardware store. And it's these thick rubber mats. And I think they're probably about 4 feet by 3 feet and they were about 20 bucks each. But you can probably buy those used as well for a lot cheaper. And I use those mats under the heavy bag. And so in your case maybe you don't want to use a new floor. But this definitely helped me control all the old dust and stuff coming from the old concrete. And it was better on my knees than the concrete. And it also doesn't chew up your shoes either. And you could also lightly drop some weights on those rubber mats and it's no big deal. Now for the creation of this gym, this definitely was the most expensive investment. And the whole floor came in somewhere around 340 bucks. But it was definitely well worth it. And one last thing that I'll note is that you'll see that I used duct tape over all of the places where the floor connects and that's to make sure that as I move along this floor I'll never catch my toe or something over one of those protruding connections and so you can add on another twenty dollars probably for duct tape now that we have the flooring out of the way and you probably didn't need it anyway I'm gonna give you a quick tour around I purchased one of those water bottle machines for about ten bucks at the yard sale and it's great for the summer winter not so much it's frozen and you're going to notice that like a big kid, I like superheroes. And because it's my gym, I like them for the motivation. So let's move on to this table here and I have a few items that I want to show you. First the hand wraps, as you know for me that's a must. Next I have a foam roller that I picked up at a yard sale for like two or three bucks. And I'm going to keep saying it, but looking at classified ads and yard sales is great as most people buy exercise equipment and never even use it. And so quite often you're going to get a great deal because they're looking to just get rid of it. And this foam roller is just great for loosening up those muscles with a self-massage. Next here I have a sandbag. And what this is is just an extra bag of cement that I had left over from leveling out the holes in the floor. You plop that into a couple of heavy duty garbage bags, seal that with some duct tape, and presto, you have yourself some homemade weight equipment for about five bucks. And if you don't have weights, well then you can use this alone to perform a ton of great exercises to get in shape. And so if you're low on cash, well this is five bucks. And it will definitely get the job done. Next, I picked up a weighted vest once I get in a yard sale. And I think this one's about 20 pounds. And I'll use that to add some weight while I do some shadow boxing once in a while. And I'll also use it for a bunch of body weight exercises. So once again, keep an eye out at yard sales, I'm telling you. Next up, I have this piece of rope and a hook that I screwed into the beam. Total price, two to three bucks. And what I'll use this three dollar contraption for is to do some standing stretches. Now I've placed some duct tape around the rope where I hold it. And then I also use a little bit of tape at the bottom of the loop. So that way it doesn't irritate my skin if I use it around my ankle. So once again, super cheap and way more effective than some fancy expensive stretching equipment. Next on the table is I have some Everlast resistance bands. And you could pick these up for about 15 bucks. And on this channel, I have complete routines using these exercise bands that will work every part of your entire body. So if you don't have access to weights, well, then that's not an excuse to have your own home gym. Because for 15 bucks, you can get yourself an absolutely fantastic workout. Next here, I have a neck harness that you can get for under 20 bucks. And this is so overlooked by most people. If you are participating in any sort of contact sport, well, let me tell you that training your neck is a must. And I use that foam roller to give me a little bit of extra height off of the floor so I can perform fuller movements. Next, I have an Everlast speed rope that's going to run you about seven bucks. And it's way more effective than a thousand dollar bike or treadmill. And I think the ceiling here is somewhere around eight feet and I can use the rope just fine. Let's see what else I have here. Oh, well I have a lightsaber just in case an intergalactic war breaks out, I'll be ready. And I had a couple of old fans lying around that I'll use in the summer months. And I also have a bunch of mirrors that I harvested off of some furniture that people were throwing away. I purchased this exercise ball new for 15 bucks and it's just great for working out your core. It's also great for stretching and a variety of other exercises as well. And I think I'll do a video all about exercise ball training in the future. 
Okay, next. This is pretty cool. Someone gave me this. Yes, they gave it to me for free. This is the total gym exercise equipment. And it uses a percentage of your body weight for exercises. Now, I'm a little strong to simply use a percentage of my body weight for certain exercises, but it's great for supersetting. And I think this came out sometime in the 80s, but I'm not sure. But if it's good enough for Chuck Norris, then it's good enough for me. Everybody knows that you do not mess with Chuck Norris. I heard that Chuck once got bitten by a cobra, and after five days of excruciating pain, the cobra died. So bottom line, don't mess with Chuck. But seriously, it's a great machine, and I've seen people selling it in classified ads for around 60 bucks. And I'll show you that you can use some furniture straps to do most of the exact same exercises using a percentage of your body weight in just a few moments. At the far end of my gym, I have a couple of racks that are holding some equipment that I may end up using, like some boxing gloves, some MMA gloves, some headgear, some focus mitts, and a Spider-Man Lucho Libre mask, well, just because. Okay, so in the beginning, I purchased this bench press rig at the Superstore on sale for around 150 bucks, and I thought it was going to be a great deal. And I had already bought the weights off of the guy in the classified ad, and I figured that I was good to start lifting some weights. But I was wrong. The problem that I had, and maybe some of you will have the same problem, is that I'm heavy. Like I said, I weigh about 210 pounds, and so when I went to use this rig to bench press the three plates that I got off the guy, so that was 315 and you add that to my 210 pounds. Well, now you had 525 pounds on that bench and the bench couldn't take it and it started to collapse. Now I didn't get hurt, but I could have. And so if you're heavier by nature, then you might want to keep this in mind. So now bench pressing and close grip, etc., was completely out of the question for this bench. I guess it wasn't a complete waste of money because I could still do some seated dumbbell exercises as those don't place the same amount of stress on the back of the bench. So, being a YouTuber, I looked to fellow YouTubers for help, and I came across this bench design on a channel called Buff Dudes, and I'm definitely gonna leave a link in the description below. Now, I haven't watched a lot of their videos, but the ones that I watched on how to build a bench and how to build a power rack, which I'm gonna get to in a moment, are definitely the best on YouTube. And so, kudos to the Buff Dudes, they deserve all the credit for this one. Now they're going to show you step by step how to make this bench and their great design can easily hold four plates and my weight. So that's 405 and 210, so 615 pounds with no problem. The only thing that I did differently from them to save some money was that I grabbed the foam and the leather off of a couch that somebody had placed on the side of the road and tossed away. So the great thing about this bench is that it's super cheap and it is super duper sturdy. Now the beauty of this power rack is that it's so simple to build. And like I said, I have to give credit where credit is due. And these buff dudes really did have a great idea. This thing is sturdy as hell and it's totally customizable. Because you see the problem that I had with this chicken coop was the height of the ceiling. And it also had support beams that ran across its width. But by using their idea and building my own power rack, I was able to customize the rack to fit perfectly between these supporting beams. Now the buff dudes will explain step by step how to build it far better than I can. But basically you will need some pressure treated 4x4s, which I also use to make the bench, and a supporting rig for the speed bag which you'll soon see. You're going to need some metal lumber ties to connect the 4x4s together with some simple screws. And you'll need a drill with a bit to drill the holes and a saw to cut the wood. But everything is pretty easy and straightforward, and those guys are going to show you exactly how to do it. And this power rack is way stronger than the bench that I bought at the Superstore. And of course I could have purchased a real metal power rack, but I would not have been able to fit it here in this chicken coop, and two it would have ran me over 700 bucks, where this thing in total, including the bench, was less than 200. And while I'm at it, I bought this Olympic bar and six Olympic plates off of a guy using a classified app on my phone for 150 bucks. And he even threw in a bench, which for reasons previously stated, I don't use the bench press. The other 90 pounds of weights that I have, I bought at the store for about 90 cents a pound, but you could probably find them cheaper. Just like a real power rack, this one has safety bars and pins that you can adjust to perform a whole bunch of different exercises. And since I'm here training alone, this rig keeps me perfectly safe.
And because I'm using this for my own personal gym, I made a few alterations specifically suited for me. And I'm sure you've noticed that I put duct tape. And not only because I love duct tape, but I did it so that I could easily slide my hands in and not have to worry about any splinters. And now with no worries, I could do some wide grip pull-ups. Or once in a while, I'll even use an extremely wide grip like this. So that's the reason for the duct tape. Another thing that I do when I bench press is that I add some scrap 2x8s to the floor. Why? Well, I'll tell you. The safety holes are spaced at about roughly 4 inches apart. And by using these 2x8s, I can cut that width in half. And I'm going to show you why I'll do that. I also place a scrap piece of wood on either side of the bench, and I'm going to show you why I do that as well. So here I have the bench set up over those scrap pieces of wood. And keep in mind that this is customized specifically for me, but you might have to alter the height differently specifically for yourself. Here as I'm breathing and benching, the height of the safety bars is perfect and it does not interfere at all with my lift. And so here I can pop out some reps without any interference. And even if I go heavier, there's still no problem. But this is why I do it. So here I'm training alone and once in a while I want to push myself. And it could happen like right here where I hit the sticking point and I missed the lift. Well because of my setup that's no problem because I can completely exhale and then slip right out from underneath. And perhaps I want to try that lift again and I don't want to have to unrack and re-rack the weight. And now that's why I added those two scrap pieces to the side. Because now it's just a very short partial deadlift to re-rack that weight. As far as resistance training goes, I find that free weights are the most effective. Now I'll make do with the bands and the cables and bodyweight exercises, but free weights are usually my go-to mode of resistance training. As you've seen, I bought the Olympic bar and most of the free weights that I have off a guy using a classified app for 150 bucks. So 150 for 315 pounds, including the bar. So that was less than 50 cents a pound. And I don't care if they were forged yesterday or 30 years ago, weights are weights. And if you can, then save yourself some money and buy things used. You'll be surprised how many people buy and then never use exercise equipment and then they're looking to get rid of it. Try even posting on your own social media site that you're looking for gym equipment. And people might even offer you stuff for free just to take it off of their hands. So in total, I have 415 pounds, including the bar, which cost me about 240 bucks. And I could have done it cheaper if I would have bought the last 100 pounds used as well. And I'll be honest, in the future, I might buy a little more so that I can have a better squat and deadlift workout. But for now, this will do just fine. And if you're new to training, then simply start with a 100 pound set that might set you back 100 bucks. Or maybe only 50 or 75 if you find it used. And like me, you can always add on to it later down the road. As far as the dumbbells are concerned, once again, I didn't want to buy a complete rack of dumbbells from 5 to 120 pounds and spend a fortune. So I spread the weights out a little bit. I got one pound dumbbells for doing a little shadow boxing at a yard sale for a buck. I bought five and 10 pound dumbbells for a buck a pound, so that's 40 bucks for those. These pair of rubber hexagon ones, I got used 40 bucks for both. And yet I could have skipped all of that by simply buying these adjustable dumbbells for about a buck a pound. So these pair of 70 pound dumbbells I got for 140 bucks. And you can adjust those anywhere from 10 to 70 pounds. I'm just lazy and I leave them at 70 and I use the 40 pounds or whatever else I have. But there's no doubt that you can start off with a set of $50 adjustable weights for about 100 bucks and that's new. And I bought these ones new because I was at the store and that was sort of an impulse buy. But once again look around for used ones and you're going to save yourself a ton of dough. So as we go around you see this orange thing hanging here and you're thinking what on earth is that? Well, wrapped around one of the cross beams is this metal cable, which is surrounded by some green rubber. Now, I already had a bunch of this stuff lying around, but I am sure you could buy a few yards of this for just a couple bucks. And to keep it in place, I'm using some plastic ties, and I bought a bag of those at the dollar store. And of course, as you know by now, I also use some duct tape. Now, the orange things that you see hanging are not some fancy exercise tools, but they're actually furniture lifting straps. And I bought four of them for 30 bucks, and I'm sure that you could probably do better than that. And if these things are strong enough to lift refrigerators and armoires, then they're definitely good to go for some bodyweight exercises. And what I did was to use that metal cable as an anchor point, 
And from there, I'm gonna use these straps to perform a ton of body weight exercises. Now there are so many different exercises that can be done using these straps. And in the future, I'll post some videos to give you some more ideas. I can also use that same anchor point for some resistant band exercises. And in the future, I will also post a video to give you some ideas for those as well. My whole point here, my friends, is to give you some cheap but effective ideas. Right in the center of my little gym, where I have some room to move around, I placed a double-ended bag. I think the double-ended bag workout has just become about my favorite workout as I've gotten older. Because now that I'm over 40, this is very easy on the joints. An Everhide bag like this one will run you about 30 bucks on Everlast.com. And I'm telling you, it's worth every cent. The bag comes with pretty much everything that you need to attach it. The bracket that looks like this is very easy to install into the ceiling, and it doesn't place a lot of torque on the ceiling, so that is usually not the problem. For most people, the problem will become how to attach it to the floor. So you can purchase an anchor on Everlast.com for about 20 bucks. And I could have done that, but once again, I have all this extra stuff lying around. And so I just drilled the bracket into a small two x four, and I placed two 15 pound dumbbells on top of that, and it never moves. And instead of placing the dumbbells, you could easily place a sandbag, and that would only run you about five bucks. Like I said, perhaps this has become my favorite workout as I've gotten older, because it really is intense, but it's very low impact on the joints. And you may have noticed that I've placed white duct tape over the bungee connections. And I did that for two very specific reasons. For one, the white tape is going to make it easier to track the bag when I make some future videos. And two, once in a while I like to target the tape on the bottom and throw some light and let me emphasize light body shots on it. And because the bungee hooks are covered in duct tape, it provides a light surface to make contact on and there's no risk of damaging my gloves. And so once again, this is just another cheap idea to mix things up and keep things interesting. Of course, if you want to crush calories, even in this cold weather, then a heavy bag is a must. It is so much cheaper and way more effective than picking yourself up a treadmill. You can pick up a 100 pound heavy bag for about 100 bucks at Everlast.com. And this Everlast heavy bag will last you a lifetime. You can also purchase a mounting bracket for about 15 bucks from Everlast.com. And your bag should come with everything else necessary to set it up. I didn't spend the extra 15 bucks for the mounting bracket because I already had this extra stuff lying around for my other projects. So once again, I used that green metal cable and the plastic ties and also a few of those lumber ties, which I doubled up. So there's two of them, one on top of the other here in the picture going from left to right. And I drilled those right into the beam with some two and a half inch screws. And now this thing isn't going anywhere as I weigh about 210 pounds and I can climb on it. Next, you probably notice that there is a bag behind me that's lying on its side. Well, Everlast.com sells an uppercut bag for about 90 bucks. But once again, I already had some stuff lying around and I already had a vintage Everlast bag and I also had two extra furniture lifting straps. So I used the lumber ties and I drilled the straps directly into the beam. I slipped the bag through the straps and then I secured the loop. You guessed it, once again, with duct tape. Now this is definitely not a necessity, but I do like to switch things up a little bit. And I did have the extra Everlast bag, so why not? Now I can practice throwing combinations that involve uppercuts. I can bob and weave underneath the bag to work my aging legs. And I could even add in some hooks here and there. I can move over to the corner of the bag and do some hook uppercut sprints and then do the same thing on the other side. And you can hit this thing kinda hard because it isn't going anywhere. So have at it, punch up your frustrations and burn some extra fat. Or you can switch things up and use some speed for your uppercuts. Remember, all of these things are just to give you some simple and cheap ideas. So over here I also installed the speed bag, and you can pick up an Everhide speed bag like this one on Everlast.com for about 30 bucks. And once again, I just like to give myself some different options to be able to do some different type of workouts. And this stuff really isn't that expensive compared to some other expensive exercise equipment, but it's much more effective. And while you're on Everlast.com, you can also buy a speed bag platform, which is great. 
But like I keep saying, I wanted to save some money and I already had all of the scrap wood lying around. So I made my own speed bag platform with a piece of plywood and I drilled that plywood right into the beam. But that alone won't cut it because the plywood is very thin and you're gonna want something that's a little more substantial for your platform so that it's solid enough and the speed bag can rebound back and forth without any unneeded vibration. So I reinforced the plywood with those scrap pieces of 4x4 left over from the power rack. And I used one for each corner of the plywood. And I drilled the plywood right into the 4x4. But it may be a problem to connect it to the ceiling. So I just bent those lumber ties at a 45 degree angle and I used those. And finally, you guessed it, I used some white duct tape to cover the plywood. And for one, that way you can easily see the contrast while I do this video. And two, now the bag can bounce off a smooth surface of duct tape and not get scratched by any splinters or some screws from the plywood. I know it may look cheap, but hey, it's effective and it works. Okay, now to sum all of this up, I'm gonna go over what I paid. So that's the Bluetooth speaker at 30 bucks, the roofing material to cover the wall and the ceiling at 50 bucks, the floor at 340 bucks, the heavy bag at 100 bucks, it might cost you an extra 15 if you want to buy the mounting bracket. The double-ended bag at 30 bucks, it might cost you an extra 20 bucks for the anchor. The speed bag at 30 bucks and 20 bucks for the swivel. And you can either build your own platform or I think they start selling platforms around 30 or 40 bucks. Then I had the uppercut bag that cost me only 15 bucks for the straps to hold it up because I already had the bag, but you could buy a new one for 90. I'll disregard the other benches that I have that I never use, but the Buff Dudes Power Rack and Bench for about 200 bucks. And for the Olympic Bar, all 415 pounds, that's including the weight of the bar, for 240 bucks. And the Dumbbells, that was 140 bucks for those 70 pound adjustable ones. And then $62 for all the rest combined. And now we move quickly to the miscellaneous stuff where it was about maybe 30 bucks in duct tape, 20 bucks for the neck harness, 20 bucks for some resistance bands, 15 for the exercise ball, 7 for the speed rope, 15 for the extra furniture straps because I already counted one pair going towards the uppercut bag, $10 for my frozen water bottle that I got from a yard sale, $5 for the sandbag that I made. I got that Chuck Norris Total Gym for free, but I did see it used for 60 in a classified ad. The weighted vest that I got used for 20, then the green metal cable, the ties, and the lumber ties for around 20, 25 bucks. So that puts me out of pocket somewhere in the neighborhood of around 1420 bucks, give or take. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but back in the city, certain gym memberships are like 800 bucks a year, and this stuff will last me 10 to 20 times that. Also, let's face it, some people will spend more than that on a new TV, maybe a video game console, or a couple of smartphones. Some people even spend that on a suit. And investing in your health will pay a much better interest rate, I promise you. And now this is what I did, and I didn't buy it all in one shot, and you can slowly build up your home gym the same way. I could have made a crazy effective home gym in my apartment using simply the resistance bands, a double-ended bag, and a sandbag, and I could have done all that for 75 bucks. So money necessarily isn't the most important factor. The whole point of this video was just to give you some ideas of certain things that you can implement into your own home gym. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I know it was long and I sincerely thank you and I commend you on your stamina. And now in the very near future, I'm gonna put together some actual training videos using all of this stuff to show you guys how to get the most out of any home gym. But until then, this has been Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition. And if you like these videos, then please click below to like or subscribe as the whole point of this entire channel is to make sure that you get into the absolute greatest shape possible.